Uh, time for me to watch Emma James is with us. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. Reaction to the, um, well, the landslide victory of François Fillon. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot less surprise around uh, than there was this time last week because this week it was widely predicted that Francois Fillon would, of course, take that primary vote and become the Conservative candidate for next year's uh, French presidential election. Uh, taking a look at how the cartoonists are portraying this one, uh, this is Sal and he says, it's Fillon who will lead the Conservative revolution and in Spanish written there is ever onward to victory. Of course, a nod to the fact that Fidel Castro uh, died this weekend and uh, he's depicted him as such as the revolutionary saviour of France. Um, Ace has come up with this one instead of Dancing with the Stars. You've got Dance with the Tsar. Uh, a nod to Francois Fillon's much publicised closer links to Russia, the fact that he is happier to work with uh, President Putin than we have seen in quite some time here in France. Um, Taking a look elsewhere, though, this is from The Spectator magazine, a British magazine that is staunchly conservative. Um, and they've published this blog on its website, which looks at lots of different things. How Fionn came to one, uh, came to win, for one, uh, which is the fact that he travelled around the country um, tapping into concerns that the electorate had over Islam and the economy, while Alain Juppé, as this writer puts it, prattled on about a happy identity for France. Um, however, he he doesn't paint an all rosy picture for Francois Fillon going forward because he talks about the fact that the CGT union, which was largely behind those protests that we saw earlier this year uh, when there was a change to employment law here in France, they are already talking about mobilisation if it is Francois Fillon in the Elysee Palace because, of course, he's talking about public sector job cuts, uh, spending cuts, increased working hours, all the kinds of things that the French are famous for striking about. Um, he also points out that the National Front will play on the fact that they see Fionn as being both posh and privileged. Um, and they say that, he says, Le Pen will be painted as anti-establishment, champion of the poor and downtrodden and those who are forgotten about, which sounds very familiar indeed. It is, of course, the tactic that really won so much support for Donald Trump in the United States. Um, taking a look at the French edition of the Huffington Post, uh, they point out another potential challenge for Fillon, the possibility of an ambush. Uh, they said, could those who didn't vote in the primary block Fillon in 2017? Because they say the Conservatives are convinced Vince, their candidate, is a shoo in um, But they warn against forgetting that only 10% of the electorate had their say on Sunday. Um, and they say that the old and rich were overrepresented, while the youth and the working class were largely absent. Um, looking elsewhere, it, unlike in the United States, where it took Bernie Sanders an awful long time to uh, give his backing to Hillary Clinton, Alain Juppé straight away gave his endorsement to Francois Fillon to become the next French president. Whether everyone else will do the same is yet to be seen, because one hashtag we saw a lot of this weekend was this one. I will not vote for Fionn because. Um, this Twitter user saying that his excessive programme will break France and his positions on society are archaic. Of course, there are some Twitter users who will never be convinced to vote for him. This is a National Front supporter who says the Patriots already have their candidate for 2017, along with a very dramatic-looking uh, portrait of Marine Le Pen as uh, Joan of Arc, I believe. It's an interesting portrait which some people will find inspirational, others will find totally, utterly repulsive. Interesting you say that the Le Pens could represent the ordinary people, given how rich and well-off and well-heeled Le Pen's yet are. Another yet another with parallel with Donald parallel. Trump. Indeed, amazing stuff. Let's move on to um, some real suffering that's going on now in Aleppo. The horrors of the bombardment there have been brought to life by... Um, a Twitter feed which uh, belongs to, uh, well, a little girl. Yes, a seven-year-old girl, Abana Alabed, who has really become the human face of survival and suffering in Aleppo. She and her mother, Fatima, have been tweeting about their lives in Syria since September. In that time, they've amassed 148, sorry, 152,000 followers. That's gone up markedly uh, since I last looked at this. Um, and she has become quite a celebrity. If we look at this Huffington Post Canada uh, article that's been posted today, um, you see that she has been filmed by journalists who have managed to get inside Aleppo um, because 
she and her mother have achieved a very rare thing. They have managed to tweet and get the world listening to what is happening in Syria. Uh, however, their latest tweets are exceptionally harrowing. Uh, they basically describe it as being between life and death right now in Aleppo. Uh, this, they thought, was going to be their last message. Under heavy bombardments now, can't be alive anymore. When we die, keep talking for 200,000 still inside. That was written by a Fatima, the mother. Bana Alabed then tweeted this a little later, and you can see that she is covered in the building dust, and that is because their own home has been bombed. Tonight, we have no house. It's bombed, and I got in rubble. I saw deaths, and I almost died. Um, now, the last tweet that we have from them is this one. We are on the run, as many people killed right now in heavy bombardments. We are fighting for our lives, still with you. That was posted over eight hours ago. There has been no word from them since. What we don't know, of course, is whether or not that's a question of uh, they are safe or, or not, or whether they just don't have access to the internet. Um, so lots of people reporting about this worldwide, really, everyone waiting to hear what has happened. But of course, it shines a light on what is the reality for thousands and thousands of people in Aleppo right now. Emma James, thank you very much uh, indeed. Emma with Media Watch.